Hey guys, welcome back to the channel in our FCS Dynasty in NCAA Football 2006. Today we are taking a look at the nation, doing a week 5 recap and our week 6 predictions. So let's go and look at the Sports Illustrated. Chippewas win, they beat Eastern Michigan, who was ranked 8th in the nation. So Central Michigan is now 4-0 on the year, 2-0 in conference play. And Eastern Michigan, there they go again on the top 25 page. 35 to 30 they lost so at least that was a really close game and that was most likely the game of the week but let's go ahead and take a look at the top 25 around the nation Boise State still number one they just beat Hofstra 48-17 UTEP Fresno State Nevada and Navy that's the top five and we've got Tulane Central Michigan Army Akron FAU and the top 10 teams do not have any losses. And after that, we have a bunch of teams with one loss. We got Wyoming, Hawaii, Colorado State, Air Force, San Diego State, Eastern Michigan suffered their first loss. And Buffalo, 3-0 right there, moving up. And so was Ball State and Florida International. And we're just going to just not look at this at all. 98-14, moving along. Savannah State jumps up to 22nd in the country after their 59-21 win over the Hampton Pirates. Rice is 23rd. And William & Mary is our third FCS school to become ranked. They are 24th in the country, and they just beat Howard 24-7. They are in the ACC Football Conference. Idaho rounds out the top 25 after a loss to Hawaii 30-7. Montana drops out of the top 25 after their loss to Dayton. And Bryant is receiving some votes. They have 19 votes right now to be in the top 25. So if they win, they will be ranked. Especially since William & Mary is a top 25 school. But that's it for the top 25. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Heisman watch. And MJ Gator Jr. is on the cover of that. A new face on the list. Savannah State's Gator Jr. takes over the top spot on our Heisman watch. And that is not really a surprise. He has been just outstanding this season. 803 yards on 46 carries. 183 yards receiving on 11 catches. 16 total touchdowns. And he's just... You can't even guard him. It's impossible. And the crazy thing is, he has the same exact player build as a couple other running backs in this dynasty for our subscriber players, and he's just outperforming all of them. Jordan Atkins and Holly from Wyoming, they jump down to two and three. Cotton from Central Michigan jumps up a little bit. He's got 11 total touchdowns on the season. And he had three last game and their huge win over Eastern Michigan. And he is one of the best players in the nation. I really enjoyed watching him play um, against Dayton even though he was destroying us. Jermaine Slaughter is the fifth player on the Heisman watch list after 107 yards and two touchdowns. And here are the NCAA players of the week, MJ Gator Jr. and Chris Numa. We got two Savannah State Tigers on the national players of the week. Numa, of course, had three tackles, two for a loss, two picks, and a touchdown. And that was just another drubbing of an ACC opponent, 59-21 victory. Big Ten, Western Illinois halfback Billy Marquardt and their win over Southern Illinois had 117 yards receiving on three catches with two touchdowns, 82 yards rushing as well. James Brown, senior middle linebacker, 10 tackles, three for loss, sack, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery for the Indiana State Sycamores, who are 3-1 and one on the season, and they are not known for their football. That is the college of Larry Bird. Nathan Parker from Furman. For the Big 12, player of the week for them, 147 yards and a touchdown on the ground. And Nick Roberson, outside linebacker, 16 tackles, 5 for loss, 1 sack, and a forced fumble in their win over Morgan State. The Big East, Charles Rucker, halfback for Yale, had 211 yards, 2 touchdowns. Lionel McGee, 8 tackles, tackle for a loss, forced fumble, fumble recovery for Princeton. And they finally got in the win column as they beat Cornell 27-17. Conference USA, Kevin Brown, Redshirt Jr. quarterback against Stephen F. Austin. Had six touchdowns and 418 yards passing and 49-28 win. 
And Vincent McClover, linebacker for UTEP, was player of the week as well. Micah Turner, quarterback for Navy, 84 yards passing, 178 on the ground, four total touchdowns. Seth Woods, 12 tackles, four for a loss, two sacks, and their win over Northwestern State, which they won 31 to 12. The Mac, PJ Moore, Richard sophomore quarterback, six total touchdowns, over 300 passing, and over 100 yards rushing against Rhode Island. Josh Williams from Rhode Island, sophomore middle linebacker, 15 tackles, six for loss, two sacks, two forced fumbles, and that 41 to seven loss to the Zips. Mountain West, Jordan Atkins, Richard senior quarterback from Wyoming, six touchdowns, 435 yards on 28 completions. Tyler Anderson, is the only player on here from New Mexico, really, with one touchdown off an interception. Okay then. Back 10, Robbie Ballard, 265 yards rushing, three touchdowns, 55 yards receiving. Dylan Tong, nine tackles, one tackle for a loss, and one interception in San Diego's win over Northern Arizona, their first of the season. Vic Cook, junior wide receiver from Arkansas Pine Bluff, had five touchdown catches on 15 receptions for 192 yards. Zane Williams, 11 tackles, two for a loss, sack, interception, touchdown for Jacksonville, and a losing effort to the Tennessee State Tigers, who are looking like a really solid squad, and Jacksonville still searching for their first win of the year. Sunbelt, Michael Slater, Richard Jr., halfback from Sanford, had 175 yards rushing with three touchdowns in their win over uh, Southeastern Lions. Maurice Robinson, redshirt senior outside linebacker for FIU, had eight tackles, three for a loss, one sack, one forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. The WAC, Dallas Cole, redshirt senior quarterback, 533 yards, six touchdowns against Idaho State. They put up 65 points. Harry Cleveland, redshirt senior, uh, free safety, two tackles, two interceptions for the Boise State Broncos in their 48-17 victory over the Hofstra Pride. And the Broncos look like they're just going to cruise through their schedule this season. Conference standings, we're not going to really take a look at that. There have only been like one or two conference games. So once we get uh, farther into the season, we'll, we'll get into that. Well, let's take a look at the results from week five. I predicted Bryant would win 31-17 over Bethune-Cookman. They ended up winning 56-10. to And the ground game, of course, continues to be a strong point for the Bulldogs. 23rd ranked Savannah State took on ACC foe Hampton. I thought they would win 56 to 10, and they won 59 to 21. The defense actually gave up a few touchdowns. And here's the craziest game of the dynasty so far. Southern Utah traveled to 22nd ranked New Mexico, and I thought the Lobos would win 41 to 20. They actually won 98 to 14. 98. 98. Just 98 points, guys. Come on. Insane. Anyways, next game. San Diego taking on Northern Arizona in their Pac-10 game. Uh, I thought the Toreros would win 28-27. They actually won a close one, 42-38. That was a really fun game to play and commentate on. I enjoyed that one quite a bit. North Dakota State versus 25th ranked Rice. I thought Rice would win 17-14. They won 55-10. It wasn't even close. And our last three games... Of our eight games on the season or on this uh, week, Northern Colorado hosting the Eastern Washington Eagles in a Pac-10 showdown. I thought the Bears would win 27-24. They ended up losing a heartbreaker, 51 to 46, on a kickoff return for a touchdown. Jacksonville taking on the Tennessee State Tigers in an SEC matchup, and I thought the Tigers would win 31-20. They won 56 to 37. And the Dolphins got the ground game working with Hines. He didn't complete one pass, though. The playbook will be mixed up a bit. Well, actually, not the playbook, but the formation subs. We're going to get players in different positions and try to get something working for the Dolphins because they have so much talent. They should not be winless at this point in the year. And our final game of the week, Dayton took on Big Ten foe, the Montana Grizzlies, who were ranked 24th. I thought the Grizzlies would win 31-30. to and that was actually a close one, 37 to 30. And Dayton almost let them slip back into the game in the fourth quarter. And now on to our predictions for week number six. Hopefully you guys leave your predictions down in the comments section below. Had a few of you guys do it last time. Keep it going, guys. 
But our uh, first game of the week will be Bryant traveling to take on the William & Mary Tribe, who are ranked 24th in the nation. That's an ACC game. I got Bryant winning that one, 28-24. I think it's going to be really close. They're both evenly matched squads, so it should be a fun one. Then 22nd ranked Savannah State travels to Yale to take on the Bulldogs in one of the biggest stadiums in the nation. And I got Savannah State winning that one, 49-14. to uh, 14. Their offense is just too nasty. Their defense is nasty. And I don't see Yale really doing a whole lot. Our third game, Dayton traveling to Illinois State to take on Big Ten foe, the Redbirds. I got Dayton winning that one, 34-21. to 21. Game number four, Southern Utah trying to bounce back from the embarrassing loss to New Mexico. They traveled to take on Pac-10 foe Sacramento State, and I got the Thunderbirds getting in the win column here with a 21-20 win. I, I'm just being really hopeful at this point. Southern Utah is one of the stranger teams in this dynasty. To go along with Jacksonville, who I have winning this week against Mississippi Valley State. That is an SEC matchup, and that is in Mississippi, so that should be a fun one as well. But I do have Jacksonville finally getting on the win in the win column, 24 to 21. Game number six: San Diego Toreros traveling to take on the Eastern Washington Eagles in another Pac-10 matchup, and I got Edub winning that one, 35 to 20. I don't know if San Diego is going to be able to run like they did last week against Northern Arizona. Eastern Washington is one of the better teams of the Pac-10, so that is another interesting matchup. And then our next game: VMI hosting the Chattanooga Mox in a Big 12 showdown. I got VMI winning a close one, 24 to 17. Their offense doesn't put up a whole lot of points, but I think they will get just enough to get a victory. Game number eight, South Dakota State hosting the McNeese State Cowboys. This is another pack, uh, Big 12 game, and I got the Jackrabbits winning that one 35-21. I think Lamar Jackson, Daly Redding, and Mason Smith are just too much on offense, and I think they're going to pull away late in the game to win that one 35-21. Uh, game number nine, we finally have another subscriber versus subscriber game. This is UC Davis traveling to take on Pac-10 foe, the Northern Colorado Bears. And I don't like the Bears' chances in this one. I think UC Davis has a pretty stout defense, and I think that's going to be the biggest difference in this game. I got the Aggies winning this one 31-14. Game number 10, Cal Poly traveling to take on Pac-10 opponent Idaho State. I got Cal Poly winning that one 56-21. Their offense is crazy, and their defense is really good too. Our final game of week six. We have 11 games this week, guys, and it's going to be a bunch of work, but it's going to be spanned between two weeks because doing the eight games this week was just brutal. That was so much work in such a short amount of time, and I barely got it all done. But North Dakota State traveling to take on the Southeastern Louisiana University Lions. This is another Big 12 uh, game. And I got the Lions winning this one 24-21. And usually how I come up with my predictions, I look at the rosters of the opponents and how they've been doing during the season, see if they have any injuries. And then I make my assessment. I don't really go off of the team overalls very much. Usually just player overalls and what positions they have that are really talented. So I do think the Lions will pull off a victory here against North Dakota State in a very close matchup. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. I will see you guys tomorrow with the Houston Texans and Tuesday with Mississippi State Game 9. But I'll see you guys Monday. Take it easy.